Sponsored by Squarespace. This submarine can destroy entire countries with the press of a button. But not just that, it's also stealthier than any other submarine ever built and can operate autonomously for months at end. And to top it all off, this submarine sent the legendary Typhoon class to retirement. This is the first post-Soviet ballistic missile submarine to enter the sea. It's the triumph tale of hardships, financial struggles, corruption, ingenuity, and in the end, success for the Russian Navy. Let's dive under the water as we explore the new tip of the Russian nuclear triad and the Western power's greatest fear, the Bore class submarine. Our story starts in the 1980s. Everyone wears fluorescent outfits, everyone loves coke, well, not that coke, and everyone's afraid of the big baddie, the Soviet Union. But that was actually only a matter of perspective. After all, to the Soviet Union, the United States were the baddies who were winning the nuclear submarine race. The US Navy at the time had made a huge leap forward with their Ohio-class submarines and their Trident missiles. Capable of carrying over 200 warheads at the time, this was seen as a big problem for the Soviets. They were inferior, and as such, their state of existence was at risk. Maybe Oppenheimer was right. So in return, they created the Giants, the Typhoon-class submarines, the biggest in the world to this day. But they were built in small numbers, with the latest Delta IV class being inferior to America's Ohio in terms of capability. The post-breakup of the Soviet Union had brought forward the need of a new submarine class, one that would spearhead their nuclear triad. Nuclear triad, you say? You bet I'm going to explain that this is much more than just a fancy name for the end of the world. The Russians planned for this submarine to be the answer to the US's increasing naval power and to keep them in check in the global game of nuclear deterrency. But a nuclear submarine deterrent is only as good if the enemy knows all about it, something that the builders have done kind of a terrible job online with no website for the submarine, something that they could fix right away with Squarespace and its new fluid engine. The Fluid Engine, of course, has impressive drag-and-drop technology that makes making a website a breeze, including the ability to make a mobile and desktop website at the same time. Now, hold your horses, as I've also got a preview of the next video right here, but there are hundreds of Squarespace templates to choose from, plus ones that have an online store already set up for you. You just have to add products, something that I've done with my own merch store, foundandexplain.shop, that you can check out after the video. But it doesn't stop there, as Squarespace also has built-in marketing tools that allow you to launch that business idea in an instant. Plus, I've got an amazing deal for fans of the channel. You can try Squarespace for free for 14 days and get 10% off your first purchase on the website. So not only do you get a feeling of being warm and fuzzy for actually supporting the channel and making a big difference in the way we make our videos, but you also get a pretty sweet website. Link down in the description or go to www.squarespace.com slash found. Back to the show. The nuclear triad consists of three elements. Land-based ICBMs, strategic bombers carrying nukes, and SLBMs or Sea Launch Ballistic Missiles based on submarines. The idea was that if you struck first, you could cripple the nuclear capability of a country by hitting their land-based silos and, if possible, destroying all of their aircraft. But submarines would remain the last threat that can't actually be matched. If you're like me and you're over 30, then you will remember playing a little game called Battleship. Yes, the same one that that movie is based on. Well, it's pretty much the same in real life. Submarines are almost impossible to find and destroy in case of nuclear war, because with them hidden in the oceans, it would be trying to look for a needle in a haystack. So during the 90s, the Russians started two things. Development of new SLBMs, smaller in dimensions and weight, so they wouldn't have to build an underwater building again like the Typhoon, and obviously, a new submarine to carry these new missiles. The new missile program eventuated in something called the R-39 UTTH Bark, 
Well, it barked up the wrong door because it actually failed miserably, with the program being cancelled in the late 90s. But the new sub, however, had the potential and was successfully designed and laid down in 1996. The name of the class? The Bore, or Borealis, the Greek god of the north, cold and winter. The new submarine was slightly smaller than its predecessor, the Typhoon. Although not much shorter in length at 171 meters compared to the 175 meter giant, it was almost two times smaller in its displacement at only 24,000 tons. But when it came to weaponry, it doesn't lack as much. The Bore can carry 16 of those sea launch ballistic missiles, with 6 to 10 warheads in each located aft of the sail. Of course, it wouldn't be a submarine without torpedoes, so in the bow section, it also has 8 533mm torpedo tubes, which can also launch anti ship missiles. Below the torpedo tubes is a section of the sonar that can detect targets up to 230 kilometers away. And moving to the stern of the submarine, we have the crew quarters and electronic warfare equipment, as well as the command post and the bridge below the sail. Aft of the sea launch ballistic missiles is the famous nuclear reactor with its pumping station. Having learned the lesson after the terrible K-141 Kursk disaster in the year 2000, the Russian engineers featured a rescue capsule on this new submarine, which is located aft of the missiles and above the reactor section that can fit the entire crew in case of an emergency. Just after the reactor is a 50,000 horsepower steam turbine that would convert all that reactor energy and put it to the propeller shaft moving all the way to the stern. The Borei's hull was also designed for significant noise reduction, with Russia claiming that it's at least two times stealthier than the Ohio class and can dive up to 480 meters below sea level. Another novelty is the pump jet propulsion, which is the first of its kind on a Russian submarine. This propulsion type is actually also present on US Virginia class attack submarines, but not on the Ohio class and gives this Russian submarine much greater speed and maneuverability. Just how much speed are we talking here? Well, in the case of the Bore, that's up to 28 knots or 54 kilometers per hour underwater. The Bore is also equipped with two additional propellers and engines that can operate if the main one is lost or non-functional, as well as using tight maneuvers when in combat. These propellers can be retracted inside the hull when not in use because they're a little bit loud. The total crew on board is 107 officers and sailors, much less than the 180 strong Typhoon crew and even less than the 155 men the Ohio class needs to get out to sea. And these crew members can operate autonomously for up to 90 to 100 days at a time without resupplying or surfacing. So all in all, the Bore class submarine is certainly one fine piece of Armageddon delivery vehicle that we have ever seen. But fascinatingly, the entire program was controversial and the submarine almost never happened at all. Despite the Russians' plan to start construction in 1996 and get it out to sea by 2002, they would not actually switch on that final reactor until 2008. That was because the submarine was delayed by the development of its main weaponry, the RSM-56 Bolava. And it was so delayed that by 2009, a year after the launch of the submarine, it was still technically not a combat vehicle because there were no SLBMs on board. After the failure of the R-39M Bark missile in the 90s, which should have been the answer to the Trident II, the Russian government accepted the Moscow Institute of Thermal Technology's proposal to modify the already in service and successful Toplo M missile for marine deployment. But the task proved to be more complicated than initially thought, and the new missile was mostly completed new compared to the Toplo M, with its first test launch occurring in 2004. But until 2009, there were six failures out of the 14 test launches and the missile was not ready for serial production, even though the submarine was out cruising and popping up next to Uncle Sam. 
This was a huge problem because by that point, the only operational SLBM carriers in the Russian Navy were their older Delta IV class submarines. In fact, the last Typhoon class submarine was converted to be a test bed for the Bolava missiles, which didn't eventuate on happening. All tests were stopped and a major probe was conducted in 2010 to find the reason for the constant failures. Per chief designer Solomonov's words, sometimes the problem is poor quality materials, sometimes it's the lack of necessary equipment to exclude the human factor in production, sometimes it is inefficient quality control. After the probe, many changes were made to the program that resulted in six more tests that were all successful. The missile was green lit and cleared for service, and finally it was commissioned for the first of the Borai class submarines. But after another testing failure, the probe was reopened and all missiles were recalled for quality inspection. The Russians truly had an egg on their face, not able to get the weapons working for their new best-in-class submarine. By this point, they actually had two more into the service and they had to do another five tests just to be confident that they're working. And to be fair, this time it seems to have worked because to this day, there haven't been any launch failures even during regular tests and training. But this is not the end of the story because it's time to talk version 2.0. This is Bore A, also called Project 955A. It's an upgraded version of this submarine. It has a different sail design compared to the original. It has a more streamlined hull due to the decrease in size of the Bolava missiles, and it has four instead of two retractable propellers and engines. It's also upgraded with all moving rudders, and its acoustic signature was further reduced. But you'll be pleased to hear that the sauna is back. That's right, it's got a sauna just like on board the Typhoon. Jokes aside, the Bore A is certainly a formidable opponent, and the spearhead of the Russian nuclear triad is as stronger as ever. So far, Russia has developed four of these new versions, with the original three still in an active service, bringing us a nice round number of seven, with another three on the way. There is also another variant proposed called the Borai K that was going to be modified to carry cruise missiles instead of SLBMs, like several of the Ohio class submarines that were modified for this role. But the Russians have so far not decided to follow the same route. This whole project is probably the biggest win for the Russian Navy engineers and the shipyards since the fall of the Soviet Union. Now, you might have been watching this video and thinking that I was going pretty gun-ho for the development of these new Russian submarines, but I want you to know that the West isn't sleeping as well. With new British Dreadnought-class submarines being the new hotness and a new generation of nuclear ballistic missile carriers, they're stealthier than ever. And at the other side of the pond, the Americans have the Columbia-class submarines being built for the US Navy, pushing the Russians to plan for an even new version in the future that will carry the torch after the Borai. Until then, the Borai-class submarines will patrol the oceans, and all we hope that they won't ever be used for combat just like their American counterparts. Thanks so much for watching, and please do suggest in the comments if you want to see another video about the other types of Russian submarines, perhaps that new version that's on the horizon. Or should I say, below the waves?